Hello and welcome to Tutorial CU. My name is Yannick and in this video you will learn how you can add user roles to your ASP.NET Core applications so that you can assign roles to users to authorize them, give them access to specific API endpoints for example or only show specific HTML content to them. In one of our latest videos, I showed you how you can add the identity, so how you can add a registration and a user functionality to your application from scratch, right? So this is basically the same project and we will go on from here, but well, in the end, it's just a new ASP.NET Core uh, MVC web application. So if I hit start right here, we will be able to see that just in a second. There we go. And if I just go to the identity account register endpoint, you can see that registration page, but you can also use the MVC template uh, that automatically uh, implements the identity. That's not a problem at all, because in this video, you will learn how you can create roles from scratch and assign them to users and then make use of them. So that's really pretty much related to ASP.NET in general and not really related to the project itself. So in order to get started, the only thing that you really need is any kind of identity inside of your ASP.NET application. So go ahead, go into your program.cs and check if you have something like that right here, builder.service at default identity. Now, as I said, we're using the true uh, identity user delivered by ASP.NET Core identity, right? So maybe you have created your own class and inherited from the identity user or whatever, but that's basically what we need in order to get started. Now that said, let's create our roles. Very important now, right before we call add entity framework stores, we wanna go ahead and for the add default identity right here, we also wanna add dot add roles of type identity role so that we are able to create roles for our identity. Now let's scroll down right before we call app run. What I want to do is I want to create a scope. So I want to call using var scope equals to app.services.create scope. So in that way, when we create a scope like this, we are able to right now access the services that we have configured right here for example, right? So before we start the application, we want to make sure that we add our roles. So if you move the application to a new web server or whatever, he will again make sure that all roles are getting created. Now, this procedure is called seeding. So we are seeding some initial data into our system. Now, we can do that with some roles, for example, as we're doing it right here. We can also do it with some accounts. Maybe you always want to have an admin account with uh, the same email address every time, right? Doesn't matter which database is connected. As soon as you switch the environment and start the application again for the very first time, a new data or the new data elements will get seeded again. If you want to take your c -sharp skills to the next level, check out our c -sharp Progress Academy. It's a unique and self-paced online course that teaches you ASP.NET Core in depth with unit testing, Angular, and even c -sharp software design patterns. We offer a 14 day money back guarantee and I'm absolutely sure that this is the fastest way on how you can progress as a C-Shop developer. You can find the link in the description below or popping up right now at the top right corner. Now let's create a role manager and that's the essential part here. So let's take the scope because we need access to our services. So we go into the scope service provider. Now we get the required service that we want to have, which is role manager. Now that role manager takes the identity role as a type right here. That's the default role. And now we can create an array. I will zoom out. I will just bring it into the next line of code just for you to really have it in one line of code visible, right? And now we can create roles. Let's create just a simple string array. Let's create a new array. Let's add three roles. Let's say admin. Well, we will take the most common ones, manager, and we will also take member or user, however you want to name it. Great, so those are the roles. Now we have to seed them. So let's just create simple for each loop. I will just write down for each, hit tap tap to create a well fold out right here. And then we're gonna say var role in roles. There we go. Alrighty, now we have our roles right here and we want to add them to our system. So let's just check if we already have those roles in our system because we don't want to have duplicates. This gets called every time we restart our application. So we don't want to have like 100 admin roles, 100 manager roles, right? 
well, we can have users, 100 admin users and 100 um, manager users and all of that. That's not a problem. I'm just talking about the real roles in our system. We only want to have them once. So let's check. So check that exclamation mark here, await. Now we take our role manager. So if wait, take the role manager dot role exists async. We want to check if a role with that string exists. So let's say admin manager or member, right? And if it does not exist, then we want to go ahead and again call await, take the role manager and create asynchronous a new identity role with the name role. There we go. So in the end, if we don't have any uh, roles provided, we will create an admin role, a manager role and a member role every time we restart our application and we do not have any roles provided yet. Now, very important, since we're using a wait right here, scroll to the very top and check if you are running an asynchronous task. And there we go. So this is a problem that does not work. We have to provide the public static asynchronous task main in order to be able to call a wait right here. Now let's start our application and we should be able to see our roles inside of our database. Great. So the application has started. Now let me open up my database. And here you can see all the identity tables, so ASP.NET role claims, ASP.NET roles, ASP.NET user roles and ASP.NET users. So what we are interested in right now is the ASP.NET role. So right click on that and let's just view data. And as I said, we should be able to see all of our three roles right now. Okay, so there we have them. They have a unique identifier, as I said, and a normalized name, right? And now let's talk about those tables here. So what we are interested in is ASP.NET roles which are our roles, right? Then we have our ASP.NET users, which are our user accounts. So let's say I have an, uh, my private account would be like Yannick at blah, blah, blah. And then we have the ASP.NET user roles, which is kind of a linking table for them so that we have Yannick has the role of admin, right? So this is stored right here. If I just right click and view data, we have nothing inside right now, but you can see it's just consisting of two columns, user ID and role ID. So it would be my Yannick uh, account ID and then the role ID of the role which is assigned. Let's take a look right here. For example, for the manager role, it would be like that unique identifier right here, which is highlighted right now. So this is how it is working. So the true question right now is how can we assign a role to a specific user? Now for this tutorial, we will just do that also in the program.cs, but you can really do it anywhere else in your code in any controller or wherever you want to have it. Just keep in mind that right now we are using the scope right here to get the role manager. Well, if you want to have that role manager in a controller, you can just use it from the dependency injection. So you can just get an instance from that by using the constructor and grabbing an instance from it from the dependency injection. And if you have no clue about it, go ahead and check out our dependency injection video uh, related to ASP.NET Core. That's very important. So, okay. Now that said, since we are already uh, seeding our roles right here, we can also seed accounts and that's a pretty common practice. So let's say every time you restart your application or move to a new environment, you want to make sure that you have an admin, um, an admin account like admin at admin.com and he has the admin role and admin rights, right? So as I said, a pretty common uh, practice. So let's go ahead and uh, do that real quick. So now let's copy that over. Let's create a new using right below. We create a scope again. But this time we don't take a role manager. No, we take a user manager, get required service, user manager of type, not identity role, but just scroll up and you can see that we're using the identity user, right? So this is what we want to take here. User manager of identity user. Now um, make sure that you are in the correct using. So don't replace your um, roles right here. Now we don't need any of that, so let's remove it. So if we want to create an account, we should now check if it is already existing in our database. So if we create an admin account, let's say admin at admin.com, we don't want to create it every time we just start our application. We only want to have this account a single time in our, well, current environment. So this is why we again write down an if statement and add an await. So if await, now we take the user manager and we can check if an account is existing in our environment or in our database. And we have several uh, different methods for that. 
but let's simply call find by email. You could also call find by ID, find by name, but we take find by email async. And as I said, like I wanna have that email, let me just create a string, let me write down email, and it is admin at admin.com. And just to make it as nice formatted as possible, I will also write down a password here. And would make sure that you're now following along the password guidelines or the policy that it's well set up by default in your application. So we have to add a capital letter, let's say for example, T, let's test, then we have some digits here, and then we have a special character, let's add a comma for example. Just make sure that you're following along those guidelines because if you don't do that, you will not be able to register an account. So <clears throat> we will check if we have that um, account by email. So we put in the email here, and that one should be null. Let's open up the curly braces here. And we want to create an account now. So let's create a new user and that's a new identity user. So whatever type of user you have, if you just use the default one, it's the identity user. So create one. Now take the user.username and set it to the email and take the user.email and also set it to the email. Now afterwards, you cannot set the password right here. Take the user manager, so user manager, dot create async right so we want to create an account asynchronous and we simply put in the user here and the password from above now we can for sure wait no worries we already set the main method to be a task an asynchronous task so and finally and now this is for sure the reason that you are here is i want to show you how you can now assign a role to an account so right now we created an account and make sure that you always for sure get the account before you can assign a role. So the user manager, as I said right here, offers some methods that help you find an account. And once you've got the account, you can simply take the user manager again, not the role manager. So you take the user manager and call the method, which is called add to role. So we simply add a user to a specific role. So we put in the user here again, after got created, right? So here we create the user. Here we really create it in our database. So afterwards, it's a valid account. So we can take it and add it to a role by a string. We want to put that user into the admin role. Now, also this one is async. So let's wait for it. Awesome. Now let's just get to it again. So we take our user manager. We search for that account. And if we have that account not found in our environment, we will create a new user. We will register that user. That's We're doing it manually here, right? And then we add that user to a specific role. Great, so now, as I said, and then I really wanna throw in a different story. Let me just scroll up, very important. By default, you can see that if you wanna log in, options, options sign in required confirmed account. So this is at the default identity. Sometimes, especially in the early stages of development, it's important to set this to false so that you can log in in an account which has the email address not confirmed. So I just leave that open for a second here. You can copy that over. It's in the options for the add default identity, right? So require confirmed account set to false. Now, if we scroll down, you can see that right here. If we set up the user, we could also say email confirmed equals to true. That would be, sorry, that would be another way to uh, have a workaround on that, right? But let's just remove it. So let's start our application and then check our database. So when I go to the table ASP.NET users, make sure to also do that in, and I update here, you can see that an admin account now got created. And if I open up the database again and go to ASP.NET user roles, remember that's the kind of linking table, right click, view data, and you should now be able to see user ID and role ID. And this is basically admin at admin.com and role ID admin. So this is now stored inside of our environment. Great, so now you have created roles, you see the user and you assigned a role to that user. Everything is inside of here, you can see it. Now, how can we use that for authorization? So let's say, for example, when I go to the um, to the start page, to the um, index page, let me just sh uh, share that right here. It applies for everything. If you have an API controller, that's fine. I right now have MVC, so that's also fine. But as I said, that's related to ASP.NET and not really to web app, uh, to the web app template or to MVC template or Razor pages or whatever, it applies to everything. 
Let me just show you our page. So I open up controllers, home controller, and now I have several ways to secure or to authorize my controller. First of all, if I secure that on the controller level, I can simply put in authorize. That one is like the, the core part. So you can only access anything from that home controller if you are logged in. Okay, the role does not matter, but you have to be locked in. Now, if we want to add a role to it, we just add parentheses and say roles equals to, and now we can add just a string, for example, we could say like member. So right now we only have an admin account. So if I now start the application, it automatically redirects me to the login page because the home page cannot be called because I have to be logged in. Now I logged in with my admin account and you can see access denied. So I'm not able to get access to this page. And that's totally fine because our controller can only be accessed by people who have the member role, right? Even though it doesn't make sense, not important, it just shows that it's working. So if I now change it over to be admin and start it again and log in as an admin, I will be able to get access to all of the functionality from the home controller. And this applies on the controller level, but also on the action level. So you will see that just in a second, I will just bring that here. I'm logged in. You can now see I can navigate around because I'm logged in as an administrator. Now, if I close that, I can also bring that authorize to the index or to the privacy. Let's take the privacy page right here. It's only visible for member or manager or whatever. We could also say manager, but as long as I'm logged in in my admin account, I will now not be able to view it, right? As I said, I just want to show you how this authorization or this authorize comment that we are using right here is working. So the index page is working. So home, that's fine because it's not authorized for any role. But now if I go to privacy, you can see access denied because I'm in the wrong role. Awesome. So you can think about your own logic for sure, right? But as I said, it's really just about how roles are working. Now, that said, there's one more thing that we need to talk about, and that's really specific to Razor pages or CSHTML in general, so that you know how to really show specific information for specific user roles. Let's go into our view into our index CSHTML here. So pretty much the home page, right? And now I want to show you how you can really show specific information for the admin role. So that if you're looked in as an administrator, you can see like, hey, admin or whatever. And then you can think about your own custom logic. First of all, we have to make use of our identity. So at the very top, I want to write down Microsoft dot ASP.NET Core dot identity. That's very important because next up we need our sign in manager and our user manager. So let's inject our sign in manager of type identity user. And as I said, you have to make sure that you use your own user here if you are not using the identity user, which is the default one. Sign in manager, there we go. And another one is inject user manager of type identity user again. And as you can guess, that's the user manager that we have already used, right? So now we can do that pretty easily now. Now we simply create an if statement. So if user dot is in role admin, we can say like h1 hi admin, right? And else we can think about some custom logic. It's a pretty default if statement, right? So if you are an admin, you can do that. Else if, if you are like a member, you can do the following, but that's just how you can show specific information. Hi, let's say non-admin or whatever, right? It doesn't really matter. Awesome. Now let's start the application again. Now let me bring that over. And as you can see, you can now see hi admin. And that's only visible because we are locked in with an account that has the admin role assigned. So like this is already covering a lot of stuff regarding the identity and roles and creating user accounts and adding user roles and all of that. So yeah, I hope you have learned a lot. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumb up and for sure subscribe to our channel so that you're no longer missing any upcoming .NET and c -sharp related videos and for sure for ASP.NET. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them below into the comment section and I'd be happy to see you back in the next video. If you really take your C-Sharp career serious, check out our C-Sharp Progress Academy because it's the fastest way on how you can progress as a C-Sharp developer.